let's talk about the process of recording this record independently. It's, uh, yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, a lot of people, they think that, uh, you know, you have to go to a big studio these days to get that big, you know, radio professional sound. And I think one of the tricks is, you know, with working in radio, and I've been producing now for uh, over 10 years, um, just the tricks along the trade that you learn and really spending time with your projects, you can make big studio sounds in a house these days, which is crazy. So the entire Lost in Film record uh, was done in, uh, in my apartment. And uh, I used it over three different studios while I was in Calgary. I moved to Edmonton and Toronto. So a little bit of piece about the, uh, the album is that um, out of the 12 tracks, uh, I think four of them were recorded in Calgary, uh, three of them were done in Edmonton and the rest uh, done in Toronto. And uh, people kind of come and look at my setup and they're like, you know, how are you doing all this? And it's crazy what you can do with computers and boards these days. Um, a lot of people just think that, you know, when you throw on a record, it comes up like that. But it took me two and a half years to get that record sounding like that. So I was very anal, if you will, about, you know, certain guitar sounds, the layering, keyboard sounds, you know, how you get this certain reverb on something like that. And a lot of people, when you're using uh, plugins and Pro Tools, go, well, you know, that sounds, you know, that guitar doesn't sound quite right. So you're wondering the entire time, you know, how do I get this to feel like one of those giant live studios with certain mics, certain cabinets, certain room sizes. And uh, so I think that's that's one of the most uh, my most proudest moments on the record is actually getting the sound I wanted, you know, in a, a one bedroom apartment in Toronto, which is kind of crazy. So <laughs> I'm uh, yeah, I'm pretty proud of how that came out and uh, just the, the way it came out. Really. Second, I just heard this new remix by this Canadian dubstep producer called Infinite. How did that come about? Yeah, um, actually, uh, he's uh, Infinite is uh, is my cousin. He lives back in uh, Calgary, ah. and uh, he's been doing some crazy remixes. And uh, I mean, he's just a nuts artist, and he's getting you know up to like thirty thousand plays of SoundCloud in a week on one of his tracks. So well, we got talking, and we're like, "Hey, man, you know, it'd be kind of cool if you know we grabbed some of your EDM music, and you know, one of these Lost in Film tracks." I kind of had a little more groove to it. Um, guitar stripped out, basically everything was a redone and I gave him a vocal stem and said, you know, why don't we try this? And uh, he created all the music around it and in two days we had a thousand plays and it's just continuing to climb from there. So we just released that uh, like three days ago and like the response has been, it's, it's kind of crazy. It's just kind of like blown up in a way. So I think that we're even working on a lot more projects together. And uh, yeah, it's kind of cool when it, it's in the family still. So I mean, he produces from Calgary. I'm in Toronto and we share stuff back and forth. So the technology is, amazing the It's days. insane that you can literally be across the country and be making records together. Yeah, exactly. And that's, uh, you know, I did that on the Lost in Film. There's a guy in Calgary named Jesse Simon. He plays drums on uh, half the record and we literally, you know, I'll phone him up and be like, hey man, I just finished this track. I'm going to send you the session over Pro Tools right now. And the next day he'll be, you know, he'll have his drums back, added it to me. And I didn't even have to go anywhere, do anything. No studios required. He does it in his home. We both produce. It's it really is amazing what you do these days. And I love the fact that you don't need a label to tell you. Now, I find that the hardest part for artists 10 years ago is that you write a song and you wait, and, and your fans wait 10 months to hear the record. Meanwhile, nowadays, you record the album in your home and you can have it to your fans literally the next day. Exactly. I think that's also, um, that can also be considered a downfall within the industry because SoundCloud, you can, anyone can upload music. Anyone can be an artist these days. And it's literally flooded with insane amounts of, you know, I don't want to say crap, but that's pretty, honest, that's pretty right? good. Honest, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. I see. So uh, it makes it harder for when you know you do spend you know eight you know eight weeks on one song, and you know your stuff's getting buried within a guy who's recorded a harmonica and a guitar on his iPhone microphone and just uploaded it. And so it's you know there's a fine line between people shouldn't be making music these days who can, and that goes to say you know auto tune and all of that. You, know, you don't need to learn how to sing. You just type it in the computer, and it does it for you these days. So, I mean, that's the uh, that's kind of the reoccurring problem right now in the music industry, but at the same time, it's free exposure for everyone, so everyone is taking advantage of that. So, I heard Broken Ride broke up. Talk about Broken Ride. What happened with that whole experience? You know, I got some great experiences. Uh, I think every band, you know, has positive and negative experiences. Uh, we're going to be five guys in the room, it's different opinions all the time, and I think that's what makes great art sometimes. But, uh, you know, we had a lot of great times. Uh, we came out and uh, played Canadian Music Week uh, four consecutive years. And it's funny, on our last year when we decided to call it quits, we actually won the uh, 2013 Canadian Radio Star Music uh, Award um, for Calgary. It was really cool, they brought us out here, we played a show, and um, you know, it's a lot of fun. It's experimenting all the time with you know what you can do as a band, where the music's gonna go, what direction, and it's funny because you can be on some tours where you know, you're know you having the absolute uh, highs of highs. We played with a band called Cedar, 
uh, the Kogni Rocket Festival. There was probably like, you know, I'd say close to like 7,000 people up there. It's insane. It was nuts. It was great. And then the next, you know, the next tour, you're like, it's going to be just like this one. It's going to be great. And there's going to be so many people. And it's going to be all worth our while. And you can be playing to, you know, what seems like a bedroom of eight people in Kenora, Ontario. Just on tour. Like, it's it's crazy how you can go from one to the other. But it's also, it's good because it keeps keeps things in perspective that way. So you got to remember, you know, whenever you're having one of those high moments, you know, those moments might not last forever, so you should just kind of take it in and enjoy the moment instead of think, thinking, you know, they're going to be there forever. So I definitely appreciate, uh, you know, whenever you have a good recording, good live show, just even having a good day as a band. You can get five guys together, it can be a little crazy, especially when you're 24-7 eating hot dogs at a gas station at 4 in the morning on the road and it's minus 40. Like, <laughs> it can, you know, it, it definitely wears on you, but I think if you take it with a positive spin and uh, just enjoy the moment that you're in, I think I appreciate it way more these days now with Lost in Film and that's kind of what the entire Lost in Film record is about is some of those stories on the road and everything you can kind of go through as a band and just a, a person. What, what made you want to get at your radio? Basically uh, I was 17 at the time, I was um, growing up in studios my whole life. My dad was a country uh, artist so there was tons of like you know gear around the house and I'd be playing with switches and be like what does this do, what does this do and then I kind of just got fascinated with with sounds and production and I'd always hear a record and you know I'd be playing guitar in my bedroom and I go well how did they how did they get that onto that and make it sound like this and you know there's so much to the production world and that's what really sparked my interest in, in the whole producing side of things so I actually went to uh, an open house at uh, the Southern Alberta Institute of Technology and it's back in Calgary my dad was like you know you got to do something with your life <laughs> the chances of making it as a rock star are like one in a billion and you know when you're 17 you go yeah yeah you know don't worry about it, I'll make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So I'm glad I got, you know, I got a kick in the rear there. But uh, yeah, I kind of got my act together and was like, all right, you know, if I really want to get into the whole radio side of things, what can I do to get there? And so I deployed my marks in school and rearranged some courses and I just barely snuck into this program at SAIT. And once I was there, I just kind of knew that that was my calling. So uh, it was great. I had a, an amazing uh, audio production teacher and the entire time I was wanting to get in the on-air side of things. So when I started off, I was uh, I was a DJ for a couple of years as well, but I started getting more and more into the production and that's kind of really where I found my group. And I was like, man, I can do so much more with this and you know, I'm not having to beat out 40 other guys, you know, just like, gotta beat out 10 and be like the best of that 10. So that's kind of how I got started in the production side of things. So it was uh, it was awesome. I started in small town Airdrie, Alberta. I uh, got a call from now, who's one of my best friends, Jesse Simon in Calgary, who uh, also plays drums and lost in film now. So after all these years, continue to do uh, projects together and after about uh, three and a half years at uh, Calgary Films Radio and Chack FM and Light in Calgary um, they offered me a job to just do the station sound imaging which is basically for people who don't know it's not a commercial it's not the music and it's not an on-air DJ it's the branding of the station so all the, the stuff that you hear that represents the station so for KISS it's, um, as an example all the stuff that says <laughs> This is Toronto's number one hit music station. This is KISS 92.5. All of that kind of stuff. So I started getting into that, which is my main goal, because that's kind of the, the peak of, of radio imaging and producing, and that's kind of the fun stuff, where there's no really rules, and you get to be creative and do, do your own thing. With limitations, of course. You know, they, they obviously go, here's a $40 million radio station, have fun. <laughs> that's kind of the greatest part of it every day. And you know, billions of people get to hear your stuff, which is kind of neat, so it's your resume is on the line at all times. So anyone can tune in and hear what you're doing. And, you know, it's got to be the best of the best of the best. And I just, I worked up my way and it was always my goal to be working in Toronto at you know, the number one CHR station in Canada. And I finally got the call after uh, about nine months in Edmonton. They said, hey, we like what you're doing out there in Edmonton at the balance. Can you come to Toronto and do KISS? And that's kind of what brought me to Toronto. And, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty cool to be here at age 25, reaching my goals, which, you know, I was hoping by the time I was maybe 36 or, you know, <laughs> early 40s or something like that so it's uh, it's pretty cool I'm living the dream right now. So this year was a pretty big year for you in terms of radio? Yeah it was great uh, I got really lucky ever since I was you know I was gonna say small but I'm so small <laughs> <laughs> ever since I was about 17 uh, my audio teacher at school introduced me to these radio production magazines and there's spots and stuff and audio from guys all over the world and all these guys I really looked up to I'm following guys in LA, Australia, uh, London, New York City these guys, like, they've got it figured out. These are the best guys in the world. Like, it'd be so cool to you know be on one of these radio production magazines with these guys one day. 
And I think it was my last month of school where I made this commercial. My audio teacher said, man, that was really cool. Like, you should submit this. Um, they do a monthly CD every year. And then they do a big awards thing at the end of the year where they pick, um, I think they get like, you know, somewhere close to like 500 entries for, for these awards. And it's all the best guys in the world submitting different pieces and voiceovers and writing and production and all these things. And it was so cool. Uh, I actually won two um, Radio Production International Awards this year and a Gold Crystal for Canadian Music Week. So it was kind of like my ultimate peak. I don't think it gets better than this. So I'm just kind of soaking it in. And I've had some amazing people um, teach me some great things along the way. So I owe so many people uh, for those guys this year. Yeah, I got I got one question. It's a two-parter for you. It's right. last question. What's next for Lost in Film? And what's next for you in video? Those are two insanely hard questions. <laughs> How do you answer those? Let's talk about Lost in Film. Lost in Film? Um, yeah, so, so the album's been out for, for two months now and um, I've done everything independently. No labels, no help from anyone. And it's kind of really surprised me because I just kind of started this up as a fun thing. And um, after you know the two and a half years of releasing my first song on the internet via SoundCloud and it getting you know plays in Australia, it was like, wow, this might actually turn into something. So after I released the record last month, um, I've sold about 800 copies in, in a month. That's great. With no marketing, no budgets. marketing, no nothing. Um, the only guys who have helped me out is uh, HMV Toronto brought it in, and they said, you know, we'll sell a couple copies here and there, and if you keep selling. Maybe we'll distribute it more around uh, Canada. So okay. that's kind of the goal right now. Is hopefully I can go back to them and go, hey, you know, I think, you know, this might be profitable. You know, can you guys distribute it more and more stores? Uh, but it's also hard when you're not a label to get it out there. So everyone's doing digital downloads these days. So if the iTunes uh, sales continue like they do, it's it's awesome. It's just going to inspire me to make more music as it is, and you know, all that stuff goes into more gear and whatnot. And people don't actually, you know, they think you just turn on the radio and the song's there. It didn't take any money to you know, record it or do any of this, and really, uh, that's half the game of it. So I'm already uh, working on material for the second album, and uh, <laughs> I don't know when it'll be out. This last one took me two and a half years, but um, as soon as I'm happy with the product, I'll release it out, and uh, yeah, I just I can't thank everyone enough for, for buying it. It's been amazing so far. What about radio? Radio's tough, too. <laughs> now I've got you know, I've, I've made my goal of Toronto so you're, so I think it's just about um, honing my craft and you know really dialing in the extra skills and uh, you know there's so much to learn inside of production things. You know, you've got 10,000 of that do different things every day, and it's all about you know trial and error, what sounds good, and you know where where's radio going? Five years, I can't tell you, but I'm going to try and stay ahead of you know all the other guys in Los Angeles and LA. I think Canadian radio is is some of the best radio in the world because teams like Rogers, you know they let me just do my thing. And they go, okay, you know, come in eight hours, you wanna work on one promo or, you know, a couple of splitters, you know, you you do what you want, just make the best possible product. And a lot of the people in the States, they load them up with, okay, here's 90 stations, you go. And it's, how do you even balance that and get creative? And, you know, sometimes when you're in a studio all day, you just be like, I need a coffee, I need a walk. I just need to like get out and just like, you know, see some sky for a bit, because these dark rooms, I just kind of get to you a little bit. But, um, so I think that's that's mainly the goal. It's just to uh, keep creating innovative radio, you know, whether it be you know, Toronto, New York, LA, I don't know where it's going to take you to next, but I'm having a hell of a time so far. Well, man, thanks for your time. Awesome. Thanks, Thomas. <laughs>